Welcome back to another video from the Block IoT. If you have watched our previous videos, you must know that Siemens recently released a significant upgrade to its smallest controller or so-called logo to include MQTT protocol support natively. In other words, from logo version 8.4, you can connect your logo to any MQTT broker such as Mosquito or to other cloud IoT solution providers such as AWS, Azure, and other cloud-based IoT solutions. So if you haven't watched our previous video, I strongly recommend to watch it now before watching this video. This is the video that walks you through every single steps that you need to set up your new logo to communicate over MQTT with a Mosquito MQTT broker running on a Raspberry Pi 5 test server. And if you don't know anything about Siemens logo and you're watching this video because you're looking for a low cost yet compact and powerful industrial controller for your industrial internet of things or IIoT project, you can watch the other video which I walk you through every single step to learn logo from scratch under 30 minutes. I walk you through the steps from unboxing a logo, explaining what are different options, how to program it, and showed you a few tests on a real hardware. So in this video, we are going to show you how you can visualize your logo data on a Grafana dashboard. We use Grafana as a visualization tool in our IoT Masterclass series. So if you are interested in IoT, make sure you watch that series. So without further ado, let's jump into the details and see how we can visualize any data that comes from logo over MQTT on a Grafana dashboard. As we saw in the previous video, we have two logos in this demo. We use the logo on the left, which is an older version of the logo, to transfer the analog input 1 and analog input 2 values over the network to the new logo which is version 8.4 and then the logo on the right side publishes these two values over MQTT to the Mosquito MQTT broker running on our test server which is a Raspberry Pi 5. So if you connect to the Mosquito MQTT broker using a software such as MQTT Explorer, you can see that the logo publishes the data to the MQTT broker with a JSON payload. So if we have a closer look at the MQTT Explorer, we will notice that these two values are related to analog input 1 and analog input 2. So let's just change the values and make sure the incoming values are correct. So I'm changing the value of analog input 1 and the maximum value is 1000. This is just an unscaled value. We can just do the data manipulation within the logo. But for testing purposes, we don't care about the process values. So we are just publishing the raw values. And similarly, for the analog input 2, we can see that the analog values are being published to the MQTT broker correctly. From this point forward, it's up to you or your application developer how you want to consume this data. So let's see how we can use these values to store them in a time series database such as InfluxDB and let's visualize those historical data on Grafana dashboard. To use the analog inputs data that are being published by the logo to the Mosquito MQTT broker, we are using a Python script. If you followed our IoT Masterclass series, this code should look familiar to you. If you remember from part 2, we went through every single line of this code and saw how we can subscribe and publish to some MQTT topics on an MQTT broker. And as we saw in another video, we use the same code to store our data into the InfluxDB database and we visualize the time series data on Grafana dashboards. But just as a recap, I'll walk you through the main building blocks of this code. In the first section, we just define where is our Mosquito MQTT broker and InfluxDB database, which in our case are running on a Raspberry Pi 5 test server. And then we will need to define the topic that we need to subscribe to. And then we created two functions, one for connecting to the MQTT broker and another one for subscribing to the desired MQTT topics. Within the MQTT subscription function, we parse the JSON payload to extract the values of analog input 1 and analog input 2. And ultimately, we have constructed a JSON body 
to use in the InfluxDB Python client to write our values into the InfluxDB database. So as you can see, this is a very simple sample code and you can expand it and build upon this code. So before starting to build our graph on a dashboard, let's run our code and see how it works. As you can see on the terminal, the values of analog input 1 and 2 are successfully being published to the MQTT broker and our Python code is successfully parsing the JSON payload and writing these values into the InfluxDB database. So we can keep this code running and we can jump into the Grafana and build our dashboard. To get us started, open your Grafana dashboard by entering the IP address of your Raspberry Pi or any server that you're using and the port number of 3000. First, you need to click on this icon on the upper left side of the window and go to the connections. As you may know, Grafana supports many data sources and that's one of the nice feature about this software. Because I have already added my data source, which is an InfluxDB database, you can see them here. But if you are starting from scratch, you don't see any option here and you just need to click on the add new data source. The process of adding InfluxDB as a data source into Grafana is fairly simple. Just simply enter your IP address of your Raspberry Pi or any other server that you are using and the port number 8086. If you have set up any authentication method, you need to specify them here. And lastly, you need to define which database you want to get the data from. In our case, is block IoT underscore DB. And don't forget to select get as the HTTP method. And once the setup is done, just click on save and test. And you should see this green message which is saying data source is working. So right now the connection between the Grafana and InfluxDB database is successfully established and we can proceed to the next step which is building the graphical dashboard. To build the graphical dashboards, go back to the same menu and click on the dashboards. We have already two other dashboards from our previous videos, but let's start from scratch and create a new dashboard. So I simply click on the new button, new dashboard, add visualization and then you need to select your data source which is InfluxDB in our demo. So the first step is selecting your measurements or database tables from your data source. We first select AI1 and then we will repeat the process for AI2. You should see the values that are stored in your InfluxDB database and just for a better visibility just select the last five minutes to be shown and as you can see right now we just see some dots but that's not what we want we will change it to use the continuous line or connected dots in our trend or graph so let's just give a title to this panel and i just call it logo ai1 just keep scrolling down and under the connect null value select always so you can see the continuous line instead of discrete values or just some dots on your graph you can define some threshold for your graph Okay, that's pretty much it for the historical value representation for analog input 1. I just hit apply. Now let's just add another visualization object such as a gauge to see the real-time value as well. Let's go add visualization and from the top menu I select the gauge and I select the same measurement from my database which is analog input 1 and let's give it a name. And let's adjust the threshold for this gauge. So I want to define 700 as the high value. Let's define 500 as the medium value. And we can leave the base as green. And hit apply again. And let's just move them to be side by side. And always remember to save your dashboard. Otherwise, if you refresh this page, everything will disappear. Okay, let's just add the process to add the data visualization objects for the analog input too.
and let's add another gauge for the analog input too. Okay, as you can see, we have one gauge and one historical trend for each analog input values that are being published to the MQTT broker from the logo. So let's just change the analog input values to make sure the graph on a dashboard is being updated properly. Okay, let's just change the values of analog input one. I'm just randomly changing it up and down. Okay, let's repeat the process for analog input number two. As you can see, the values are coming from the logo to the MQTT broker, and our Python script is successfully writing the values into the InfluxDB database, and the graph on a dashboard visualizes all the data in real time. So this is a very simple demo, but you can use the same idea in any industrial Internet of Things or IIoT project. I hope this video was useful. If you encounter any problem during the implementation of this project, let me know. You can find us on LinkedIn, YouTube, or on our website at blockiot.com. Until the next video, have a great day or night and enjoy building and making new things. <laughs>